Hello, I'm Mike Thomas from LW Scientific. In this video, we're going to cover dark field on the I-4 microscope. Uh, right now, this I-4 is set up with a bright field condenser, which is right here. It's called an Abbey condenser, and it has an iris on it that opens and closes. Uh, so to change over to dark field, first you have to lower the condenser. Then you're going to loosen this silver thumb screw that's right here. Don't change the alignment. We'll assume that your condenser is already aligned. Um, but we loosen this silver thumb screw and we can now pull it out. As long as it's lower, it comes out. Now something to notice is this condenser has a pin on it. There's a slot at the back of this carrier. So when you push in your bright field condenser, you have to make sure to hit the slot. So notice I missed and now I hit. And that's how you put in your bright field. Um, but let's take that back out. The dark field condenser has no pin on it. There's no orientation. It doesn't really matter. So really, we're just going to slide it in and tighten it up. OK, make sure it's snug. Again, we're not going to try. We're not going to change our alignment yet. These two angled screws um, move it around and move your field of light. But don't do that yet. Uh, so now our dark field condenser is in place. So we can come all the way up. Now, this condenser is an oil dark field condenser, which means you're going to put oil on top of the condenser. Um, so it's messy. You have to just be careful and do it in a, in a uh, careful way here. I'm going to move my stage, and I'm going to bring my condenser up. Maybe I'll even move my objectives out of the way. So now I have access here. So I'm going to take oil, and I'm going to put two drops on top of this condenser. One, two, okay? Now, with the condenser down a little bit, my slide is going to be right above it. Now, as I come up, what I want to do now is I want to get the oil to pancake, to spread but I don't want it to come all the way up and knock my slide out of its carrier. It kind of knocks you out of focus. So there's a perfect point of height that we want to adjust when we first set this up. Um, so when I come up, and I, sometimes I'll put my finger on the slide and I'm going to make sure it's not bumping, but I want to come up and I want to see that oil pancake, okay? And it just spread out. But again, I can come up here. I see my pancake of oil coming out and back, but I can tell with my finger I'm not bumping my slide. So I, I have this actually perfectly adjusted for height. Uh, but when you first set it up, you may have to make an adjustment. And it's a little, little tricky, a little tedious. It's a, it's a very small um, Allen wrench. It's a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench that we're going to use. And uh, this little bitty pin right there. Let me move this so you can see it. Again, remember we have oil here. You have to be careful as you're moving around. Um, so this little pin right there, I'm going to bring this down. This pin controls this stop. So I'm going to loosen it. Now it's loose. You may have noticed that this little pin went up and down. It's spring-loaded. So wherever this silver pin is located, that's where it's going to stop your condenser. So right now it's spring-loaded and it's loose. I want to watch that oil. I want to look for that pancake of oil right there, not too high. And that little silver pen has been adjusting itself because it's spring-loaded right now. So as I come up and down, I want to get that perfect height where that oil has spread out pretty wide. And now if I just tighten up that little bitty set screw right there, I have now locked that pin in position. So now my condenser will come up to that perfect point every time. So again, hold my slide, bump, bump, bump. I see my oil, oil getting wide, but I'm not knocking my slide out of place. Okay, for the next part, now that we've got our height adjusted, we're going to look at alignment, and that is these two angled screws here. Um, I have it lined up fairly well on the screen here. I'm on the lowest power, and so 
broad view on the 4X objective, but that little uh, center of light is right in the middle of the screen. But sometimes you'll notice it'll be way over here. So maybe I'll be even off the screen. So now I'm, it, basically these are, it's kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch where you've got a spring in the back pushing forward and you're controlling the front two of this triangle. So you're, you're able to move this around, um, but once you find it, bring it in. So now I've just got it perfectly centered just by a little trial and error. Now that's on the 4X, so that's where it's gonna be easiest to align it. Then when you go to your 10X, you should be fairly well aligned. Now another thing you'll notice is there's a little bit of a up and down. So remember our puddle of oil? As we make it wide and you can go down too far and you will lose your dark field altogether. So I'll go down, so gone. Coming back up, you'll see the oil start to catch and you find the sweet spot. You may be all the way up, you may come down just a hair, and you'll find the best illumination there. Now we go to the 40X, and this is where it's gonna be really beautiful. These are epithelial cells here. Um, but again, I'm gonna go up and down a tad. So I lost it, come back in, and I can go down, find just the best spot, and make sure you're aligned. Uh, but again, I do the alignment usually on the 4X. Um, now, the dark field is going to work well on a 4, 10, 40 objectives, even a 60x objective. You should be able to do dark fields. Anything up to about an aperture, which is on the side of your objective, anything up to one, just under 1.0, that means when you go to your 100x oil, it's not going to work. It's going to be bright. Basically, the, the aperture of the objective is so wide that it can still gather the light. Um, because what's happening here is it's blocking the middle of the light, and so it's dark in the middle. Uh, but the 100X will not work in dark field unless you get the special 100X dark field objective. Now this one, to be more specific, is a 100X infinity plan dark field oil objective. So that's a lot to say. Uh, but the interesting thing about this is it has an iris on it and it can open and close. So basically I can bring my aperture down so this will work in the dark. So we will install this and then you will see how the 100X dark field objective can work. Now that we have our 100X dark field objective installed, uh, we're gonna move to it. Um, and it's an oil objective, so we were on our 40. As we move, we stop halfway, just like a regular oil objective. And just remember, an oil dark field condenser has oil underneath the slide. That has nothing to do with whether or not you're putting oil on top of the slide. We're going to put oil on top of the slide when we go to this 100X oil objective. Um, but the dark field condenser is an oil condenser, so there's always going to be oil on the underneath. Uh, but now we're going to stop halfway, put one, maybe one and a half drops of oil on top of our slide. So now we have oil on both top and bottom. We'll bring it into place. Sometimes I'll click through just to make sure the oil gets uh, sealed in there well with no bubble. Uh, so we should have an image. There's, now I'm closing and opening and closing this iris. Okay, there's our cells. Now when I'm closed, I'm in the darkness. So I can play around with this iris. But if I've got it too far open, it's just bright field, so it's, it's kind of washed out. Uh, but I want to close my iris down to a point where I've got a good dark field image. So now I have oil on the top, oil on the bottom. I've got my iris closed down to where I do have 100x. It's basically a 1,000x magnification, um, and it's in darkness. So basically the light's coming up and bouncing off the specimen, but the objective is in the darkness. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, as you're moving around with oil, now we have oil on top and the bottom. If we're finished, I'm going to move my objective out of the way. I'm going to lower my condenser. Now remember, right now I have oil on top of that condenser lens and I have oil on both sides of this slide. And I've learned a lesson here. Be very careful or you're gonna have a big mess on your microscope stage and it's hard to get it off. So um, I'm gonna take my slide off carefully, lifting it straight up and I didn't get any oil on my slide. 
And if I set this down, again, remember, oil's on the bottom, oil is on the top, so I'm gonna take my lens paper and clean this off. And another thing in dark field, um, if, what, if what I've just done is I've just wiped oil off this slide. So if I use this slide again right now, the streaky oil that's on top of this cover slip is gonna really reflect in dark field. It's gonna look bad because you've left a dirty slide. So if I went back to my 10X or my 40X and I tried to get dark field, I could see my cells and I would be seeing these streaky things going across. Well, that's the wipe and oil. So I like to clean off my cover slips, my, my slides very, very clean in dark field because otherwise every little streak will reflect in dark field on the screen. So to get the best image, make sure your slide is completely clean. I still need to clean my condenser and to do that, again, I'm lowering it, loosen the silver thumb screw, bring it out and clean it off. You can use some lens cleaner if you like. Uh, most of the time I'm, I'm just cleaning it off because you're gonna put oil back on it next time you use it too. Following these steps will help you to get the most out of your dark field I4 microscope. Thank you for watching.